Welcome to this really international competition, meine Damen und Herren. Ich freue mich, dass Sie hier sind. Ich begrüße Sie herzlich. Ich freue mich über ein gut gefülltes Kino und muss ein bisschen plaudern, weil wir den Regisseur nicht finden. Es gibt Filme, die... Es gibt einen berühmten Witz in der Branche, den erzähle ich Ihnen jetzt. Wir leben in einer Welt, in der man einen Film, den man machen will, dann immer einen Co-Produktionspartner braucht, also jemanden schnell überzeugen muss, dass er sich für einen Film interessiert. Und der Witz lautet, und dazu gibt es Loglines, also ganz kurze Beschreibungen dessen, worüber ein Film ist. Und eine, die ich wirklich sehr mag, ist, er beschreibt einer den Film, den er machen will und sagt, Two girls go on vacation, one sells the other. Können Sie sich einen ganzen Film vorstellen? Sie lachen gar nicht, ich finde den toll. Warum lachen Sie nicht? Das ist, ähm, das ist, ist schon nahezu absurd. Aber bei dem Film ist es eigentlich so ähnlich, wenn Sie lesen, Zugführer bringen in Ihrem Leben, ich weiß nicht wie die Zahl ist, rund 20 Menschen um, statistisch, und sind nicht schuld. Das ist doch auch, auch toll als Logline. Und ein bisschen hat das natürlich auch mit diesem wunderbaren äh, serbischen Humor zu tun, der eigentlich äh, verloren gegangen war. Also es gibt alte Filme aus ähm, früheren Jahrzehnten, in denen man diesen serbischen Humor 50er Jahre und davor ganz deutlich sehen kann, aber er ist verschwunden. Er ist irgendwie durch die Moderne, die Öffnung und so weiter verschwunden und jetzt kommt er auf einmal von hinten durch die Hintertür wieder rein. Das hat uns sehr gefreut. Es ist ein sehr merkwürdiger Humor. Man kann ihn sarkastisch nennen, ich, stimmt aber auch nicht ganz. Auf jeden Fall ist er sehr human. Also er trieft geradezu vor Menschlichkeit und ist trotzdem sarkastisch. Das, das gibt es in Deutschland, glaube ich, gar nicht, diese Art von Humor. Also das gehört auch dazu, wenn man eine Weltreise macht, dass man auf, auf diese Weise wirklich in andere Kulturen und der Denk- und Fühlweise so reinklettern kann, wie man es im Urlaub nie schafft, es sei denn, man lebt da gleich fünf Jahre. Das ist ein, eine tolle Fähigkeit des Kinos. So, you have no idea what I was talking about, but it's not so important. <laughs> important is that Mr. Milos Radovic, is he here in the room or not? He is not in the room. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> but he's here. I mean, he had a screening in Heidelberg and uh, today and, or yesterday, what, anyway, 15, 20 minutes now ago, he left the hotel. And the question is, in which direction? <laughs> We don't know. <laughs> Mr. Milos Radovic, can you please come in now? No. Okay. Um, vielleicht schaffen wir es danach, meine Damen und Herren, wenn Sie noch ein, eine Minute sitzen bleiben beim Abspann, der wahrscheinlich siebeneinhalb Minuten lang ist, aber Sie können sich dann entspannen nach dem Film oder noch mal auslachen. Wenn Sie sitzen bleiben, dann ist er hoffentlich eingetroffen. Wenn nicht, sage ich einfach raus hier. Ja? Machen wir so. Ladies and gentlemen, if you, if the film is a film, well, the, the credits are on the, on the screen. If you stay in the, your seats, uh, I might introduce you to the director. He is in Mannheim, Heidelberg, but he is not here. Okay. Ich freue mich, dass Sie da sind. Ich wünsche Ihnen gute Unterhaltung. Ich mag den Film sehr und wie Sie mögen ihn nicht. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Enjoy the film. Also the author of this beautiful film, Milos Radovic, please. It's your third film, I, you just told me, the third film. Uh, but why? You, you are so good, I mean, you have to be in Cannes or Venice. So. They didn't discover you right now. We have to. We have to do it. I, I will. I will do it. So welcome here. It's a beautiful film. I really love it. Uh, thank you very much. I didn't expect such a big audience and such a great applause. I'm uh, sorry I didn't show up at the, before the screening because I was lost in one time. <laughs> so I, I was late. 
Uh, I'm happy if you like the film. What can I say? Uh, you know, my uh, grandfather was a train driver. And I'm, <laughs> it's true. And the uh, father of the main actor is also was also the son of a train driver. So we decided to make finally before he died one film about the families. <laughs> so I'm the all this newcomer from Serbia for this festival. But I'm happy and uh, if you are interested in the in details about this film, I will be outside. Thank you very much. Jetzt gleich im Anschluss. Er wartet auf Sie und springt jetzt von der Bühne. Der Hände, ja. <lacht> Ladies and gentlemen, come to the Q&A right now in the lobby. Thank you very much. You wrote the screenplay too. Let's say you wrote the train driver's diary. Um, how come it's trains? I mean, trains are in the... In film history, kind of trains are important, right? So film history starts in a way with trains and um, images of trains, so... No, it, this is a specific uh, thing here, with a specific story. I, I just said, when I was in the cinema, that uh, my grandfather was a train driver and the, fa and the grandfather of my producer and the actor in the, ma in the leading role is also uh, a grandson of a train driver. So we knew something about the life of the train drivers and the accidents that they are having during their work. And we decided, you know, we decided simply to, to make a film about, in a way, about our families and about the train drivers and their and they work. Uh, that was the, the main reason for the film, but, you know, I didn't want to make a tragic film. It could be a tragic film, and I didn't make comedy. I wanted to make a, a, a warm and uh, touching film about that special people. So, still, so film history, like, whatever film history but um how trains are something really filming i think you know because they they this is like a basic movement like the basis of movement um you thought about when you thought about how the film should look like you thought about how you would like to show it or you just took it from your personal uh, story and experience i was thinking that i should you know, I wanted to make something timeless, you know, that's why you cannot say in this film is it 1950 or 60 or 70s, but there are also mobile phones in the film, so I wanted to make a film with, you know, really timeless, because what is going on on the railway is, you know, it will happen always, and it happened always, so... That's why the film has that kind of retro design. And it's not only retro design, it's also like when you take the place where he's, where he's living, it's a kind of surreal touch, right? Of, uh, how did you work out this? The, you know the, the... Where did the place come from? With the flowers, with the wagon, with the l loftish appearance? That's a fairy tale about the train driver in a way. But there is something, there, is a, there are a lot of things that are real there. You know, the train drivers usually live together and their families are living together in one place. There is one small town near Belgrade 
uh, we're only train drivers in this. Yeah, and that's some kind of a family tradition, you know. The school where the train drivers are learning, you know, young train drivers are learning, is 90% those are the sons of the train drivers. So from generation to generation there, you know, the train drivers are following their fathers and the families are living together. So the Serbian railway company is very poor, so they cannot, uh, you know, help those train drivers to buy a, a, a flat or a house. Or, so they are living in the coaches and in the garage. And so, so where the place where we shoot the, the home of the living character is a garage of our former president Tito. His train was there. Is there. So there are, there are a lot of train drivers who live in those coaches. You know. So it's real, but in a way, as, as you said, it's a surreal. Yeah. You have, you have, I mean, you have um, role models for this kind of, for your style or for your visual ideas? You have um, directors you like, you maybe also show them to the actors? Well, I don't have a role model. Maybe there is some influence of Aki Kaurismaki in this film, but I cannot say it was a role model. That's no, something... it's like, let's call it inspiration. That's yeah, maybe... something, yeah, I like his film, so probably there is something in, in that, in, in those films that uh, in, inspired me. Um, Tom, you just started talking about your, your lead actor before, that he also comes from train driver's family. I got this right, right? Yes. Um, is that the reason you, you decided for him, or, or um, how did this work? How did no, you pick I the wrote, actors anyway? I, mm -hmm. I wrote, wrote already with him in mind. Yes, yeah. I wrote uh, the scripts for him. This is the second film that we are working together. So I knew at the beginning that I want him for the for the leading role, and also he's my friend. So he helped me, helped me, me when we were preparing film. He was very creative, and he helped me during the writing of the script. And uh, his role was absolutely decided before the film. All other actors were casted later. Well, do you have questions for the film already? You've just seen our remarks, comments, critique, constructive critique, or hmm. maybe we can talk about the humor. How you put, like, I mean, how do you know when you write a script, your script that it's going to be funny or on the verge or not funny? Or do you, do you test it? Do you read it to someone? And, and do you think uh, about these things? Or maybe they don't matter even? Uh, for this film, I was not sure what to do at the beginning, you know. I was afraid that if it is too funny that won't be, you know, that, that won't be good. And if it is tragic, also it. So I decided to ask the train drivers themselves how do they would like to make a film about themselves, you know, to, to, dis, to, to talk with them about their job and the things that are happening. So there is a special humor that exists in train driver. I mean, when they, when train drivers are speaking about, the, when they are telling about the, the accidents, you know, there is really something. Uh, there is a special. What I cannot say anything else, but the. But there's a German word for this geigen humor. It's um, very dark humor. Yeah, but I don't know. There's it's, no a, it's a, maybe a, it's some, but. How I understood that is that the humor is helping them to survive. You know, that's the way how they're they are living with 
with those things. Yeah. See, in Germany so I, we have a word for this kind of humor even. <laughs> okay. So I decided to put that humor in the film as a light motive. Mm -hmm. Questions? Please. Um, uh, following a question, firstly, um, I find it very great, absolutely great. Uh, my question is, um, we know exactly here from Germany that uh, train drivers have huge problems after such accidents. Now my question is, uh, have the Serbian people, especially the Serbian um, train drivers, a special mentality to put the problems, the psychological problem aside, or is it um, overridden here uh, in this film? I hope it's not overwritten, really. I think they are putting aside their problems, but it's not, I don't, I don't, I couldn't say it's a matter of uh, mentality. It's, it's a, you, how shall I say, it's very common in, uh, in this part of the world to use humor because when you are small and you cannot do anything against the big, bad things. In this kind of world, I think they, they use humor as a cure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to ask in, in the uh, connecting question sort of to yours. Um, but we see, like, I mean, we see therapists who fail, like the young therapist, and we, we see his friend therapist who kind of, and he goes there, right? I mean, it's, it's not that they do show therapy as, as a tool which doesn't work. Yeah. How, yes. There is a procedure, you know, when those things happen, you must go, uh, you are not driving anymore, then you are going to sell uh, to some kind of a therapy, short therapy, maybe three, five, seven days, I don't know exactly. And then they are testing you if you are ready to go back. But usually it lasts very shortly except for some cases or some train drivers who are not able to continue at all. So they are leaving, you know, they are leaving the job and they don't work anymore. But for, for those who are, who, will, who are continuing with their job, it's uh, maybe two weeks, three weeks, and they are again on the road. Yeah, bitte schön. Ich habe vergessen zu sagen, dass Sie Ihre Fragen auch gerne auf Deutsch stellen können. Ich kann die dann übersetzen und würde dann auch zurück übersetzen, die Antwort, wenn Sie das möchten. Ja, bitteschön. Also, ähm, ich möchte äh, zuerst mal äh, Herr Radovic gratulieren zu diesem Film. Is, uh, I, would like to congratulate you. I would like to congratulate you for the film. Wie das Publikum begeistert war. Und äh, ich habe gelesen, der Film wird auch äh, äh, kandidiert als äh, aus, äh, aus serbischer Beitrag für Oscar. Uh, she heard that the, the film is the Serbian contribution for the Oscars. Yes, there is a Serbian Academy for Film. Mm -hmm. And they chosen this film to be our nominee for the, for the yes, that's true. Wow. Also meine Frage wäre, ist das sozusagen im Film auch einigermaßen, dass man wenn ein Schicksal sozusagen einem bevorsteht, einem also Zugfahrer in dem Fall, man kann vom Schicksal sich irgendwie nicht retten. Also ein gewisser Fatalismus muss man da so das Leben nehmen als Schicksal. Oder kann man sagen, ähm, jeder ist ein eigenes Glücksschmied, beziehungsweise eigenes Unglück in dem Fall, oder wie? Sie fragen also nach der, der Botschaft mehr oder weniger. Ja, ja. Svako koš svoje sreće ili svako koš svoje nesreće? Richtig. Ja, das ist richtig. Both of it. Ja. Yeah. 
Sie sehen, Serbisch geht auch. Da kann ich dann halt nicht weiterhelfen. <lacht> ja, haben Sie Fragen, Anmerkungen, Kommentare? Bitte. Hi, I'm a filmmaker from Egypt, uh, and I'd like I have a question for you about the idea of the writer director. Uh, why did you decide to write your movie by yourself? Some directors they don't decide, uh, they don't like, they don't trust the others to write their movies, and uh, they decided to write it by by themselves. Did you write your movie because what what was the reason that you decided to write your movie by yourself? Why you didn't like make some money? You know, I, I didn't believe myself as a director, so at the beginning I was thinking about to give this script to some other director, you know. But I was sure that I could write the script because it was, there was something private in that story, you know. Something, in a way, something about my memories of my family in, in my young age. You know, I, my grandfather was living in a place like this one where this main character lives. So I was sure that I should write the script. Then after that, I was, when I wrote the script, I, I was a little bit tired and uh, I was a bit empty. And I was thinking maybe when I am so tired, I should give the, the script to someone else. But so you wouldn't I, trust other directors. Yes. That's what yeah. <laughs> but after that, I changed my mind and <laughs> said, "Well, I, I'll do it." Mm. Yeah. Yes, please. Maybe you can tell us a bit. You were talking about the train driver's story and the, the story, let's say, of your lead character, but how did the boy come in the story about that? I mean, the, the, the side story about adoption and, and uh, how did this, this was secondly? I then? wanted, no, yeah, not secondly. I wanted, what I wanted is to, to make a connection between two lonely men, you know, one young man without family and the other one, the old train, train driver, whose wife was killed on the, on the rails. So I wanted to make that uh, close connection between young and, and maybe future, uh, maybe the train driver in future, and this old one. So that was my idea, to, to, to make a close connection be, between those two similar characters. When you decided where to shoot the film, I mean, we were talking about this place where they where he's living, but we weren't talking about the the actually. I mean, there at least in Germany we have this. There are kind of fan groups, you know, of of railway tracks. I mean, they 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 they, they photographs of it, films of it. There used to be even an I think a night program on TV, right, where you would only see trains going. I don't know if any one of you remembers. Is it still on? So you would be able to watch all night, like only trains going through Germany. So how did you pick the, the, the tracks or the, the places where, you, where, where your trains would go? I mean, it was your favorite places or it's, it's favorite no. bridges, all close together in very apart places? Place to pass all, all those places are really near the Belgrade, you know, it's maybe maximum 100 kilometers around the Beverly. But I chose those places while we were driving with the train drivers, you know. The railway company gave us one locomotive, you know, one, do you say locomotive? The machine, yeah? Locomotive. Yeah. They gave us one locomotive for, for a period of, of one month. And we were driving, my, uh, the main actor and I, and one train driver, we were driving around, you know, and he was telling us about his life. Also, we were looking for the locations, you know, so we spent uh, a whole month in the, in the locomotive, you know, from the morning till the, you know, to the end of the day. 
So we learned a lot about train driving. I was also driving the train. <laughs> so you see how Serbian railway is, is secure. <laughs> you know? uh, that's why all this accidents happen. <laughs> who, who knows who is driving, you know? Maybe a film director. Yeah, maybe there is some <laughs> lunatic film director driving the train, yeah. So th that's how we found those, those, those locations. Do you know everything about that film, or do you maybe want to know some, something more, or share something? Doubts? Questions? Remarks? I would like to know about the extravagant dog. <laughs> How did that dog come into? I mean, you could have picked any dog. Why this? this is, it's a naked dog, right? It's a, I don't know. Uh, well, I was thinking, yeah, my idea was to have a third lonely character in the film. You know? <laughs> but this Chinese dog was so crazy, you know, that we were not able to shoot the film with him, you know, because he was absolutely, he was so aggressive, like a tiger. You know, he was jumping on everyone, on, on the camera, on the, on the crew. So what you saw in the film is just what we were able to do with the dog. <laughs> so that's the story about the dog. No, sh no shooting with the dog. No, Next time. no. Kids and dogs. <laughs> Haben Sie noch Fragen? Gerne auch auf Deutsch, Serbisch. Italienisch könnte ich auch anbieten. What's your next project going to be? Uh, my next? After the Oscars then. Yes, when I received the Oscar. <laughs> Now I have a film uh, for the next year. Fortunately, I have got uh, some money from Italian Ministry of Culture. The whole film will be uh, in, shot, shot in uh, three estates, a town in the northern Italy. And it, this city was very popular among the former Yugoslav citizens, you know. So that's the film about one Yugoslav family spending one day in Trieste. So the whole film will be on, on the main square in Trieste. And I got the support from Italian, two Italian funds, and now I'm waiting to, uh, if I'm going to get some money from Serbia, and then we will shoot next, next summer. Okay, so we hope we will see that film here too. Thank you very Absolutely. much for being here and having your film here. Thank you for inviting me, thank you for the audience, thank you very much. Thank you for...